Good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Goodbye Bullshit, Hello Happiness. We are your hosts. My name is Atusa, and we have the fabulous Hollis as well. And today we're talking about a subject I think that most people can relate to, which is parenting. It's a big one on my list always. Um, as I figure out and navigate and had to be a parent, and I always say that in a um, loving way that Ilya is my kryptonite. <laughs> he is the only one that can, like everything is good, everything, nothing's showing up and he can go inside and like pull out exactly what's been hiding inside that energy or whatever and bring it up like hmm you still have this let me poke at that so you do something about that one you know, let's not keep that one but he is um yeah he's amazing at that so <laughs> what are your some of your thoughts on parenting and how we should parent um I don't know. You know, they don't come with a manual no. and there's absolutely no manual. And um, it's definitely a growth process and we screw up mm -hmm. and we screw up a lot. Um, but I think the difference is kind of like what we were talking about before. It's the awareness um, and being present. And this kind of awareness of, of especially when we've had our experiences, we often uh, come in with a, an idea of, well, I want it to be different than what I had. Even if we had what we consider to be a good childhood, I had, I had a decent childhood. My parents were very supportive and I'm very grateful, but there were things that happened along the way as far as communication goes, as far as like certain ways that I was treated in certain ways where there's a concerted effort for me not to do that. Um, so I think there's kind of a learning process in that. And then your kids are individuals. They're just different personalities. You can have one, two children, you can have 10 children and none of them will be the same. So I think it's what I've learned along the way is it's just really um, listening and not saying that I was always the best listener or always am. Um, but I know that as I've gone through my changes in my jobs and all of this kind of stuff, and as I've gotten older and more content with where I am right now, I'm a lot more present, and which makes me a better listener, which makes me not so cranky, which makes me let things roll off quicker instead of having these standoffs. Cause before there was a lot of standoffs because I was kind of in a state of like, ah, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. Um, and now, even though there's stuff going on and there's busyness, there's a different attitude and a different mindset with it. So their response is different. So I've definitely learned. I mean, we're always learning, but yeah, uh, how old are your kids again? Now they're 18 and 21. 18 and 21. Mine is, 13, soon to be 14, a fun age. <laughs> but you said some really key point that I love. One is that they come with their own personalities and it's true, they are their own individuals. And that's something I constantly have to remind myself as well that I'm not here to fix it. He is here for his own experiences, his own life. And again, something that you said, be aware, be present, and listen. Um, sometimes it's very tough, but um, we'll, we do our best. That's the other thing. Do your best. I think as parents, um, I know you know. For me, being a single mom too, and you know, you you you're not a single mom, but at some points, you know, everything fell on your shoulders. It becomes hard. You keep like saying, "Well, did I do the right thing? Did I say the right thing? Did I listen enough? Was I aware? Was I did did I do this?" Yeah. And you're constantly uh, question yourself. And just to know, as long as you do, that's how I feel. As long as you're doing your best, and um, you're there and you're present and you listen in the best way you can, and recognize they're here for their own journey and we are not here to fix it for them and 
we are not here to we can guide we can direct but still we got to give the choice to them um at yeah. least that's how i feel it's funny um yeah so many things that you just said resonated with one was that like i've learned with my daughter who's the younger one we've always of course the mother daughter thing at times you know my husband will say you guys are exactly alike like that's why you guys have these standoffs um but we would argue and then i need to walk away and she doesn't she'd get very upset she's like don't walk don't walk away from me you're abandoning me i'm like um, I, I need to get away from you like do you understand i need to get away from you right now but there was this whole like back and forth where I was like, I need to step away. But what I learned was, and there were times where it would be like two hours before I'd come back. And we finally, when having a conversation about it, I realized I need to establish a time that I will be back. So she knows, so it doesn't escalate more. So yeah, that's uh, a good one. I was like, okay, yeah, that's, it's good. I have to be, sometimes I'd find that I was being the kid. I'm like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. And then she'd be like, mom, you know how this makes me feel. Um, so it was this whole, it was this whole role reversal. But when it was like, Hollis, come on, suck it up. Like you need to be the adult here. But besides even that, it was like, she's exactly right. Like once she has the time frame, up, I need a half hour. I need 30 minutes to breathe, to do whatever I need to do. So I'm not in this state. And then we can come back and have a conversation. And it was much healthier and it was much, it was much better. It took us a while to get there, honestly. But when we, when we did and have, it's much healthier. Yeah. Um, it's funny because it, uh, we have the same thing that um, there are times that I just say, it's been a rough day. It's been tough. I've had too many things. I just need a break. I, yeah. Let me get, let me go sit for like, watch something, give me 30 minutes and then we can talk. Give me like an hour and then we can talk. Or if our conversation, I see like it's going way too long and I need a break because I, there are many times I would just close my eyes and just stand there. And closing my eyes, I found another um, trick that mm -hmm. helps me stay in me and not focus on him and what he's saying and what he's going on. I can listen yeah. better. So I can, yeah, I would close my eyes and I told him, I said, listen, closing my eyes doesn't mean that I'm not present. Actually, this way I can be more present and listen to you and hear you better. Because if I'm seeing all that's going on in front of me, <laughs> then I'll start reacting to that. So this way I can be more present. And wow. so that, that's been um, a thing, but um, it gets, I think the Love difficulty that. also, uh, you know, even I was talking to you earlier about this, f you know, parents just in general, you know, everybody's, there's a generational stuff that has gotten passed down from generation to generation. I think for most part, parents don't come to yeah. screw up their kids, <laughs> you know, they want to do their best, but yeah. they've got their own shit that, you know, they, they came now. And we carry that forward and then add to that the society stuff that has happened. And I think our timing right now is one of the most difficult times to parent in terms of social media, in terms of just people, you know, they see all these great things, even for parents, not just for kids, you know, social media, yeah. oh, everything is great and everything is rosy and everything, like my yeah. friend is doing this and that. Well, th that's just the blip that you're watching. You're not seeing the whole picture. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think um, it's a tough place. And for me, it always has to come back. I'm doing my best. Yeah, I'm doing my best at this moment with what has been given to me. Yeah. Remind him he has choice and I'm not here to fix it. Actually, Ilya is the one that uh, taught me that one. You're not here to fix it. Because I was definitely at some point a mama bear with even the right. stuff that had happened. I would just want to go and like protect and shield and be there right. and tell him like, you need to do this. And he, at one point he's like, don't fix it. I don't like it when I come to you and talk to you, you try to fix it for me. Listen, be there, but I don't want you to fix it. So I constantly, that's still a big challenge for me. Like my mama bear comes out and I have to like say, we're not fixing it. Let's, let's, let's step back. 
come back a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the fact that you're saying that it's natural and I'm curious what men think, you know, men, if you're listening, <laughs> chime in and say, uh, cause there is, there's very much of it's innate. I, I, I believe in that we want to protect that. We want to stand, you know, for our, there are cubs, there are children. And when they get to these ages where they can speak up and have their own opinions and all of this kind of stuff. At one point, my son said to me, we were having a conversation about something and I was like, who are you? Like, how could you have that kind of thought? Like, who raised you? Where did you come from? And he goes, did you ever think that maybe it had nothing to do about you? But no. <laughs> what do you mean? It's all about me. about me. I'm like, we made you. We created you. It's everything. And he just patiently looked at me and he's like, no. It's like, I am my own person with my own ideas. And I'm like, and that's what we want for them. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's like that's what we want, but when they actually get old enough and verbalize and are mirrors for us and put it in our face, we're like, so you you can react in a few different ways. You could be like, well, I'm the adult, da 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 da, da. how dare you? Or you could be like, you're right. Or I'm sure there's many other variations of things, but I was like, okay, you call me on it. Yeah, I think you and I are very similar. Ilya, as I mean, he's been doing it for a long time. I, you know, you know, my book chapter dedication was, you know, he's one of the person I dedicated and said he is my best teacher because um, he is. He, he constantly reminds me he is his own person. He has his own ideas, yeah. and he reminds me that I don't get it as well. Sometimes, you know, it's okay for me to listen but I don't get it, which he's right. And I noticed that a few days ago that the way I grew up, first of all, culturally, a big difference from where he grew up and how I grew up. Parenting, very different structures and all the stuff that I had to go through. Um, I became an adult really fast. I was not a kid at all. Um, and. The other day I was noticing he's right. I sometimes, the things I expect maybe that he should know at this point is not so much apparent because he had kid stuff as well. He is a kid and he gets to be a kid and it's wonderful that he gets that. And I have to realize that, yeah, I, you know, as much as right now I, you know, bring out my kid and, you know, I become silly and play and do all those things. I never was a normal kid that got to play and do stuff and, you know, until much later into my, yeah, much down in life. So uh, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's different. And I'm glad that uh, they stand up to us, that they tell us, they make us listen. So that's, very important. And I wouldn't, I know you're the same way. We would not change anything about that. I always tell them like, yeah. I am so happy that you get to stand up and tell me, you know, these things, because even if I might not react in a way right there, I do think about it. Like he's right. Yeah. So. I think it's the, like you said earlier, generational stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's, there's certain things you decide that are ending with you. And you want to just, um, so I know very much for me, there's a lot of paradigms about money and fear and lack and, um, you know, some other stuff. And it's kind of like ends with us. Our kids are both like, and I can see the changes at a much earlier age with them. Um, where I'm like, thank God, you know, yeah. so, so grateful that, uh, there's the communication that there's that kind of awareness to kind of change that mindset, because I believe that it just changes how they are as a person, you know, they just approach life differently. Um, so yeah, very different. Gen so this generation learning. is very different. And that's the other thing, you know, even school to me, schooling is, you know, again, when my generation and culturally, again, everything was, 
about education and everything was about college and what you study and you know there were certain things that just you know you shouldn't even think about studying but these guys um i mean you go out on the internet and there are kids as young as like 15 7 10 and they're all like having um these it's not professional, whatever, but they're making money. They, they're uh, influencers and they're doing stuff. And, you know, so even the way yeah. we thought about work and money and education, all that stuff, things have changed for them. Education, you can, you know, you don't have to go to a brick and mortar school anymore. Um, the variety of things that you can study has uh, expanded to an enormous list and they have so, so many more choices so true and, and just that whole like traditional schooling like you're saying concept elementary middle high school you know wherever you in the world uh, are in the world whatever you call it go to college you know get the job now it's so different i mean i have to say in our house like and it's knowing your kids i knew our son wasn't a college kid. He's very hands-on. He really, school was like needles in his eyeballs. It's like, why would we like pay for something more where he'd be torturing himself and he, he just wouldn't want to be there. He needs to be actually doing something. So we, he traveled a little bit before he actually got into all these different jobs. He went to Costa Rica, he went to Spain, he did like different things and he, 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 like, as a person, it was just huge because there was also issues going on here with a friend group where we we're like, dude, you got to see like a bigger world. Like you have to know that this is not only what there is. And he was resistant, but we got him on board and it a life changer. And our daughter graduated from high school, was into that whole traditional going to college thing. It was totally stressing her out. So anxious. Like, she's like, mama, like crying, anxiety. Um, she did get into a school. We deferred. But um, I was like, Sky, why don't you just do what Jared did? <laughs> like, travel. Like, you don't have to be in a school. You don't have to take tests. You can actually, like, live and have experiences. So she finally relaxed into it. And she was like, but it was interesting because she was, like, resistant. And then she was like, when she started learning about stuff, she's like, oh my God, I'm so excited now. And I can't believe six weeks has gone by. We're actually picking her up on Friday. Oh, wow. She's coming and back. Nice. She's coming back and she's had, I can't wait. We've hardly heard from her, which isn't usually like her, which obviously means she's safe and she's, we've heard a little bit, but um, she wants to come back work and she's excited to see where she goes to next. So, but it's that non-traditional i guess for lack of a better word right now of um i'm just i, I love it yeah i love that the traveling i think it's a really big deal and i hope every kid takes that time to travel because they are just gonna discover so much about themselves and what they like and the world you know it's not just what you see here and what you see on your social media yeah um i have a question for you so how your advice on if the kids are being resistive to something that you know is beneficial or you feel is beneficial, how do you get them to shift from into that space that they're willing to see it? At least give it a chance. <laughs> well, I guess I can say, how do we do it on this end? Mm -hmm. um, again, it was the listening it was the showing mm -hmm. these are the possibilities because as we know as parents the more like my like skylar would say the more you tell me i can't the more i'm going to want to do the opposite like you know that i'm like i know i know she's constantly reminding me of that so with both of them it was really a matter of presenting so let's look at this just have a conversation just talk to them you don't have to commit like the person who was running the program for where, you know, where um, we decided to send them. You don't have to commit to anything. Why don't you just find out about it? Like you already know this other thing's going on. So they had the conversation. Um, and then when once Skylar had that conversation, she got excited. For Jared, bef 
he got excited, but there was still hesitation because he was still connected with his friend group, which mm -hmm. there was like guilt and this other stuff of, of him leaving kind mm -hmm. of thing. So we honestly, you know, we went to see a therapist, which he was resistant. Um, but we have enough of a connection and a relationship where we actually went together and I was in a lot of the sessions and I had the choice of, he had the choice of not having me be in there, but he was like, she can be in here. So I had to say like having a third party was helpful in, in this scenario. Yeah. The what? only thing I don't know what your experience is, I, is the timing of it. Yeah. Um, the timing that you have that conversation, where you have the conversation, yeah. especially nowadays that it's harder to get them off their uh, electronics or they're doing stuff for school and everything else. And, you know, mine, he's got the lacrosse and he does like rock climbing, all these different things. So finding that come time in between where he is in a receptive mode also, it, that, it helps. That's it, is the receptive. And I think it's, I mean, I don't know if it sounds earthy, crunchy. You, you just can't push it on them yeah. because if they push, they're going to resist. And my friend said, which was the best advice ever, kids talk the most when they're in the backseat and you're driving. Mm -hmm. You don't have the face-to-face. So she's like, more stuff would come out of her son when they'd be in the car than ever expected. And yeah. I found that too when they're in the passenger seat at a certain, because we're not looking face to face. And um, there's just more openness. It's kind of more relaxed. And I, I think it, you're exactly right. It is timing and it's situation and you're, it's not confrontational um, in order yeah, to- cars. It's great. I like that one. Um, the the other thing I wanted to ask you as well, I know um, I've thought about this as well, is um, right now I see there is a there difference in groups of kids, meaning like you have this group of kids that, uh, especially in our area, that they all seem to be, um, they have a lot of anxiety, they have, uh, you know, they're on medications, there are a lot of them that were high anxiety situation during COVID, you know, they even got depression. So a lot of that stuff that happened to them, and what I see is that it's the first is competition among them, like that they have to be better, they have to be best, they want to be good at school and good at this, so their social mm -hmm. image is really big for them. And there is a group in between that keeps, you know, going back and forth between these two things. And then there's the other one that really just doesn't care and they're marching to their own beat and they could care less. So um, for you, again, because like your kids are a little bit older, what did you find and how would you guide them to, um, because that's, I think one of my biggest thing for kids is at, at the age that the social pressures are so high, how do you guide them to find self-love and um, yeah, acceptance among themselves? I think it's They're obvious. Mean. Yeah. <laughs> they can get me. They can. But I think it's everything that you're doing and everything I'm trying to do is just love your kids. Just know that you have their back. Know that you're there. Know that you're there to listen, that you are a listener and that you're not a preacher. And they will come to you when stuff is happening. And the more you expose your kids to and the more you talk to them about things, the more they'll be exposed to it. Like my kids, I've taught inner city predominantly, you know, all of their childhoods. So they were being taken to places where I was teaching. They were, you know, um, I would teach in the house. I would be going to all these spaces and in understanding New Jersey. So where I am in Cherry Hill, Cherry Hill has its hoity toity kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, reputation. Yeah. Um, and Camden is 10 miles away. So Camden, New Jersey is known as like high crime, like, you know, all this kind of stuff. And my kids are used to, going there. In fact, my son's best friends live there. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so it's a different mindset. It's a different mentality. So they've always been exposed to more and more culturally diverse. So when Skylar would be here in Cherry Hill amongst her friends and they'd be like, you went to Camden? And she'd say, don't talk about what you don't know. Nice. You know, so she, I mean, Skylar would stand up for a wall if the wall needed to be stood up for. Like she's just, it's her personality. But I guess that's a long answer to say is that the more you expose your kids to, the more that you talk to them, the more that you know, they know that you're there to listen, then the more safe they'll be from all of those pressures. One time Skylar wasn't talking for a long time about something and she was all, she just finally broke down and she's like, I don't know what to do. She was being bullied on uh, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody was an Instagram thing and somebody, they did this dance to a song and somebody took it and said that she was being racially uh, put a racial slur in there. And um, Skylar's like, you know, I would never do that. And this girl just pushed it around and was threatening her. And it was a huge thing. She didn't want to go to school. She didn't want to, the girl was bullying her. And Skylar didn't want me to say anything to the school. Uh, she didn't want to make a big thing. Jared is incredibly protective of her. If he knew that this was going on, he would have that would have been a whole other story. Like that would have like yeah. been a whole other thing that blew up. So I was trying to protect her, trying to make sure he didn't know like this kind of silliness that it ended up blowing over. Um, but it took a little bit for her to come to me. But when she did, and it, it was also the way my reaction to, I had to figure how I was going to react because I wanted to be the mama bear. And I was in the beginning, like, who do I have to squash? Like, yeah, no. what do you need me to do here? Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. I'm just, um, for all the parents out there, just know as long as you're doing your best, really. Um, and like we talked about here, I think you are, um, doing your best listening to them. You are present. And, um, the other thing that we didn't talk about taking care of yourself, I think self care Yes. It's very important as parents and um, especially if you're a single parent or you're in charge mostly, um, it gets very important because yes. once you get to a place that you are just tired and you don't have it in you to listen and lots going on, that's when you should yes. remind yourself, okay, I need to take care of myself because yes. the more you're in a better place, I think, the better you can take care of them. Oh yeah. It's that whole, the kids are so sensitive to how I can make a facial expression <laughs> where I don't even know I made it. And they'll be like, what's wrong? I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, you just made a face. I'm like, oh my God, can I make a face without being like looked at? Like I was just thinking, I just had a thought in my head. It was probably like, oh shit, I forgot to do that or whatever it was. Like it was just a thought, but it's like, they're watching you. So basically, yeah. so it's, we're not perfect all the time. And so it's those moments to be able to say, look, I messed up. I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. I had whatever it is. It's just really tell them you love them. Yes. <laughs> Give them a hug. Yes. Tell them some days that you're just cranky and, um, it's just kind of the way it is and you need space. But most importantly, you're exactly right. We need to fill ourselves up before we can be there for anybody else. Yeah. Um, one last thing also, because you touched on it, forgiveness. I have constantly asked this kid for forgiveness, whether I felt I did it or not. It didn't matter from his perspective. Yeah. That's what was happening. And I'm constantly um I'm sorry for, please forgive me. You know, I did not see it from that angle when I was doing this or forgive me. I just have been going on for a week and, you know, and I was tired when I said that. So for asking forgiveness, it's a big deal and forgiving yourself actually too, uh, while you're at it, because, um, you don't want to carry that stuff around. No. I think it's a great topic. Thank you so much for like bringing this topic up. And you know what? Cry in front of them too, if you need yeah. to. <laughs> like I've done that. Sometimes I've just broken down. My son has no idea what to do. Deer in headlights. He's just kind of like, 
uh, she's like broken. Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Daughter, you know, she's gotten much better. She's like, she's right there. But I mean, but show your emotion because human, yeah. human. Vulnerabilities, because that's what the, is important for them too, to see that it's okay to be vulnerable. You don't have to have it all together all the time. No. I love it. Thank you, Hollis. Good 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 insights thank you everybody hope you got something out of it if you're watching this later please like it share it comment on it and let us know if you have a topic that you want us to talk about and if you want to be a guest you know um, comment as well and let us know and i'll get in touch with you have a good night everybody thank you thank you, thank you. bye